Hi everybody, it's Professor Mitchell finishing up chapter four. In this video, we'll look at section 4.3, uh, simplex method part two on non-standard and minimum problems. So in this section, we'll look at the simplex method for problems in non-standard form, negative constants, a minimization problem, and then a few further comments. All right, so uh, here's how the simplex method works for problems in non-standard form. Uh, so let me just say that what's going to make these problems non-standard is usually that you will have one or more inequalities that have a greater than or equal sign in them. So what you do to start off with is uh, take any inequality that has a greater than or equal to and multiply both sides of it by negative one. Um, and of course, I'm not talking about the inequalities that say X and Y are greater than or equal to zero. Uh, <clears throat> so by multiplying those other inequalities, both sides by negative one, you get a linear polynomial is less than or equal to a constant where the constant can now be negative. All right, if a negative number appears in the upper part of the last column of the simplex tableau, which it will generally after you've done the previous step, we're going to remove it by pivoting. So now I have to explain where to pivot. Select one of the negative entries in that row, all right, in the row that has the negative number at the end. The column containing this negative entry will be the pivot column. Now you'll see later, uh, of course, there may be more than one negative entry in that row, and there really is no rule on which one to pick. Uh, so just pick one and hope that it works out, all right? <laughs> I'll have a little more to say about that later. All right, select the pivot element by determining, so uh, in the previous step, we've determined where the pivot column is. So now we will select the pivot element by determining the least of the positive ratios associated with entries in the pivot column, uh, except for the bottom entry. So just like in the last section, we're going to divide the number in the right-hand column by the number in the pivot column and see which one of those positive ratios comes out to be the least. Uh, and that's where we'll pivot. And we'll repeat this step until there are no negative entries in the upper part of the right-hand column. All right, so what generally happens at this point is it turns into the type of problem that we did in the last section, where you will now see if you've finished your problem by looking at the bottom row, selecting the most negative entry, and proceeding just like we did in the last section. All right, so um, yeah, so that's, that's that. All right, so here's an example. <clears throat> We're going to maximize the objective function 5x plus 10y, subject to the constraints x plus y is less than or equal to 20, 2x minus y is greater than or equal to 10, and x and y are both greater than or equal to zero. All right, so this second inequality, 2x minus y is greater than or equal to 10, <clears throat> is in non-standard form because of the greater than or equal to. So we're going to multiply both sides of this inequality by negative one, and that will give us for that inequality, negative 2x plus y is less than or equal to negative 10. So at least now, <clears throat> excuse me, all of the inequalities are less than or equal. So we're ready to set up our simplex tableau. So we have two slack variables, u and v. When you change these inequalities into equations, you're gonna have x plus y plus u equals 20 negative 2x plus y plus v equals negative 10. And from your objective function, we're maximizing m equals 5x plus 10y. 
So as usual, we'll subtract 5x and subtract 10y from both sides, and that'll give us negative 5x minus 10y plus m equals zero. All right, you'll see me do another example of that uh, in the next example, okay? All right, so at this point, I think I am ready to switch over to the tablet where I will show you what to do next. All right, so uh, we're looking up here for negative numbers, and of course there is one. Okay, so looking in this row, I'm looking for a negative number. I see one over here. All right, so now I need to compare two ratios because uh, I know that the pivot element will be either here or here. So it comes down to which is smaller, 20, minus one, uh, 20 divided by one or negative 10 divided by negative two. And since negative 10 divided by negative two is smaller, that is where we're going to pivot. So the first thing I need to do is multiply that row by negative one half. So that's going to change row two to one, negative one half, zero, negative one half, zero, five. And now I'll use this one uh, to knock out the other entries in that column. So the next thing I need to do is change row one by adding to it negative one times the new row two. In other words, we're taking this row and subtracting this row. So one minus one is zero. That was the whole point. One minus negative one half is three halves. One minus zero is, whoops, is one. Uh, zero minus negative one half is one half. Zero minus zero is zero. And 20 minus five is 15. That takes care of row one. And now we'll get rid of the negative five in row three by, uh, we will change row three by adding five times the new row two. Okay, so we're not looking there anymore. Now we are looking here. All right, here we go. So negative five plus five times one is zero. That was the whole point. Uh, negative 10 plus five times negative one half is negative 10 plus negative five halves, which is negative 20 halves plus negative five halves, which is negative 25 halves. And then zero plus five times zero is zero. Zero plus five times negative one half is negative five halves. One plus five times zero is one. And zero plus five times negative 10 is negative 50. All right, so we don't have any more negative numbers over here. So now we've turned it into uh, the kind of problem that we did in the last section. So at this point, I will determine my next uh, pivot element <coughs> by looking for the most negative number in, the, in this part of the bottom row. And that would be negative 25 over two. Uh, and then there's only one choice for the pivot element because there is only one positive ratio. It comes from doing 15 divided by three halves. I don't even need to look at five divided by negative one half because that is not a positive ratio. Okay, and actually I need to make a correction. I've got one mistake here. 
Okay, this is not a negative 50. I was looking at the wrong row two, all right? So we were doing row three plus five times the new row two. So I should have been looking at zero plus five times five. This should be a 25. All right, so in case you were confused about that, you were right to be confused, all right? Okay, so let's uh, continue. I will just get rid of this up here. You know what I think? I think that I should take a lesson from that and break this into two steps. All right. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is get rid of that three halves, and I'm going to do that by multiplying by two thirds, uh, multiplying row one by two thirds. That is the only thing I'm going to do in this step. All right, so that's going to give me zero, one, two thirds. Uh, two thirds times one half is one third. Zero and then two thirds times 15 is 10. And I'm just going to copy the rows that I have. And then in the next step, we'll talk about using elementary row operation number three to fix up the rest of that column. I need to take my time because doing all of this in one step is. I, I'm mostly doing it correctly, not 100%, but it's kind of giving me a headache, all right? Because <laughs> I'm always worrying about, am I looking at the right thing? Okay. All right, so the next thing to do is to get rid of this and this. We need to put zeros there. So let's get rid of all this. Okay, and we like row one just the way it is. Zero, one, two thirds, one third, zero, 10. All right, so the way that I'm gonna fix up row two is I'm going to change row two by adding one half times row one. Okay, and now I'm sure I'll do it correctly because all the rows I'm looking at are in the same matrix. I think that's been my problem. All right, here we go. So one plus one half times zero is one. Negative one half plus one half times one is zero. That was the whole point. Zero plus one half times two thirds is one third. Uh-oh, here we go. Negative one half plus one half times one third is negative one half plus one sixth, which is negative three sixths plus one sixth, which is negative two sixths, aka negative one third. Okay. Zero plus one half times zero is zero, and five plus one half times 10 is five plus five which is 10. All right, and now for row three. Oh boy, we have to get rid of a negative 25 halves. So we're changing row three by adding 25 halves row one. Here we go. <clears throat> zero plus 25 halves times zero is zero. Negative 25 halves plus 25 halves times one is zero. That was the whole point. Zero plus 25 halves times two thirds is 25 thirds. Here comes the fun one. I might need to write this one down. Negative five halves plus 25 halves times one third. All right. Um, oh, here's an easy way to do that. So we need a common denominator six. So why don't we just multiply this one by three over three. That's gonna give us negative 15 six plus 25 six, which is 10 over six, AKA five thirds. All right, 
one plus 25 halves times zero is one and 25 halves plus 25 halves times 10. Uh, maybe I ought to write that one down too. Also, it's late in the day and my brain is kind of getting tired. <laughs> 25, maybe you can relate. 25 plus 25 halves times 10. Two into 10 goes five. <coughs> 25 times five is 125. 25 plus 125 is 150. Woohoo! All right. And an extra woohoo because I don't see any more negative numbers in the bottom row. So that means we have our solution. So remember this was X, Y, this was U, V, and this was M. So our group two variables, I'm sorry, our group one variables are U and V. So we set those equal to zero. I'll write my solution up here. We set u and v equal to zero. And the rest of our solution is y equals 10, x equals 10, and m equals 150. All right, so that's the solution. The maximum value occurs when X is 10 and Y is 10. All right, back to the presentation. Oops, I need to start the slideshow up again. There we go. All right, so we did all this. And there's our solution. Okay, so the next uh, example is a minimum problem. In this problem, we want to minimize the objective function 3x plus 2y, subject to the constraints x plus y is greater than or equal to 10, x minus y is less than or equal to 15, and x and y are both greater than or equal to zero. All right, so there are two things we need to do at the beginning. <coughs> okay, um, let's talk about the familiar thing first. So that uh, first inequality is in non-standard form because it has a greater than or equal to. So we multiply uh, both sides of that inequality by negative one uh, to get this new and improved set of constraints. Now, the other thing that we need to do, because this is a minimum problem, we, we need to rewrite it as a maximum problem. So the way that you do that is you take the equation m equals 3x plus 2y, and, or let's, let's not put it that way, just take 3x plus 2y and multiply it by negative 1. The idea is that whatever ordered pair x comma y minimizes 3x plus 2y, like let's say that the minimum value of 3x plus 2y is 50. That would mean, think about this for a few seconds, that would mean that the maximum value of negative 3x minus 2y is negative 50. So that's how we change it to a maximum problem is by multiplying that expression by negative one. So instead of talking about minimizing 3x plus 2y, we're going to maximize the opposite, negative 3x minus 2y. All right, at this point, I am going to switch over to the tablet. It occurred to me as I was going through this that you might need me to show you an example, uh, you know, kind of going from this point. It's been a little while since we've done that. So here's where the problem stands uh, now. We want to maximize m, which is negative 3x minus 2y, subject to the constraints, negative x minus y is less than or equal to negative 10, 
x minus y is less than or equal to 15. x and y are both greater than or equal to zero. So we turn that into a system of equations by introducing our slack variables. <clears throat> so first equation is negative x minus y plus u equals negative 10. Then we have x minus y plus v equals 15. And just a reminder, the way that you get this is by moving everything over to the same side that M is on. So instead of M equals negative three X plus two, uh, minus two Y, it's gonna say three X plus two Y plus M equals zero, okay? So when you write the simplex tableau for that, it looks like this. <clears throat> and we are ready to begin. First, we look at the right-hand column for a negative number. And then we look to the left of that negative number for another negative number. And in this case, there are two. <clears throat> so for no particular reason, other than maybe that I read ahead and I see that this is the one that works, I am going to choose uh, this column for my pivot, okay? I'm gonna, again, talk about that a little later. I, you know, it's not really fair to say I read ahead, right? But really, it, it, it's just a lucky guess. There wouldn't be anything wrong with, with picking the first column. Uh, it's just that I'm not sure it would work out due to nothing more than just bad luck, okay? All right, uh, there is only one place to pivot there because the ratios I'm comparing would be negative 10 divided by negative one, which is positive. However, 15 divided by negative one is negative. So that is not a contender. I am going to pivot here. All right, so the first thing I will do is multiply that row by negative one. Which turns row one into one, one, negative one, zero, zero, ten. Okay, and now I need to get rid of the negative one and the two. So I'm feeling lucky in this case. I'm going to do this all in one step, especially because I see that all I have to do to row two is add it to the new row one. So I just have to remember to use the new row one. So these are the two rows I'm adding together. All right, here we go. So one plus one is two. Negative one plus one is zero. That was the whole point. Zero plus negative one is negative one. One plus zero is one. Zero plus zero is zero. And 15 plus 10 is 25. All right. Now we need to get rid of the two in the bottom row. We're gonna change row three by adding negative two times the new row one. So now I am not looking here any longer, I am looking here. All right, here we go. So three plus negative two times one is one. Two plus negative two times one is zero. That was the whole point. Zero plus negative two times negative one is two. Uh, zero plus two times negative two times zero is zero. One plus negative two times zero is one. And <coughs> zero plus negative two times 10 is negative 20. All right, so at this point, believe it or not, we just about have our solution. We just have to be very careful about uh, interpreting it correctly. So let me get rid of all this. Okay, so we have, oops, we have X, Y, U, V, and M. 
our uh, group one variables in this case are x and u. So those are both equal to zero. All right, and then once we cover up those columns, we're left with y equals 10, v equals 25, and m equals negative 20. Now, where I said to be careful, remember that we turned this into a maximum problem. Negative 20 is the maximum value of negative 3x minus 2y, which means that 20 is the minimum value of the original objective function 3x plus 2y. All right, so hopefully that makes some sense. Let's go back to the presentation. All right, there it is. That's the solution to our problem. Okay, so now some further comments. It is possible that a given linear programming problem, and this is even true in section 4.2, has more than one solution. This often shows up where there is a tie for the choice of the pivot column. Different choices can result in different solutions, but the maximum or minimum will be the same. A linear programming problem may have no solution. I think I mentioned that in chapter three. So um, it, this is a little easier to explain graphically. So when your feasible set is bounded, uh, in that case, you are guaranteed to have both a maximum and a minimum value. But when your feasible set is unbounded, you may have one or the other, but not both or you may not even have a, a maximum or a minimum. <clears throat> so when you're using the simplex method on a problem like that, uh, it will break down at some point. When there is a tie for the pivot column and one is arbitrarily chosen, like in this most recent example, it is possible, unfortunately, to create a loop in which the simplex algorithm leads back to the previously encountered tableau. If this occurs, a different pivot should be chosen at this point. Now, I don't remember if I have ever tried in that previous problem to pivot in the first column. Um, so th this might happen if you do that, I'm just not sure. Uh, it can happen. All right, so to summarize this section, the simplex method can be used to solve a linear programming problem in non-standard form as follows. If the problem is a minimization problem, convert it to a maximization problem by uh, multiplying the objective function by negative one, like we did in the last example. Form the initial tableau and eliminate any negative entries in the upper part of the last column by pivoting. Uh, they forgot to mention about you know, changing the inequalities to make sure that they all say less than or equal to. Uh, you may have to multiply some of those inequalities by negative one. Apply the pivoting problem uh, process for problems in standard form to the resulting tableau. So once you've eliminated all of the negative entries from the right column, uh, then you proceed the way we did in the last section. That's going to do it for section 4.3, and that's going to do it for chapter four. We'll see you next time.